All right. Uh, today we're going to work on the bevel gear. All right. The tools then uh, pieces that you're going to need for the bevel gear are one rack bracket right here. You're going to need two bevel gears and you can use two of the big ones or two of the small ones. I chose one of each. Uh, so we'll have to figure out the proper spacing. About six uh, screws, half inch or three quarter, doesn't matter. Six Keps nuts, of course, to, uh, to use with those six screws. Uh, one of the uh, small Allen wrenches for the shaft collars, the 564s, a handle, two drive shafts. I just grabbed a handful of spacers. Uh, just depends on how you put it together, how many you're going to need. I'm going to need at least four shaft collars, maybe six. Uh, and then, of course, four of the uh, flat bearings. And then I've got my hex driver as well. And then this one's called a rack bracket. I know there's a skinnier one over there. We want the rack bracket. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust this camera. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick somewhere along this, uh, this uh, wall here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach uh, my shaft, my flat bearings. I mean, and I'm going to do it on the second uh, one down. Okay. Make sure you do it on that second the second hole. It's going to help you with the spacing. Once you get that hand tightened, give it just a crank. Hold on to the kept nut from the back. Don't over tighten it. Put the uh, second one parallel to it on the back side. Again, hand tighten it, crank it. Now, if you are a class that does not have these hex drivers, which is absolutely fine, I'm very careful with ours, uh, you can use the smaller Allen wrench, uh, the one that's smaller than this, and tighten it down just a little bit as well. If you're using pop rivets, that works as well. We just choose to go with Keps nuts here in our class. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and slide my drive shaft through. And I'm going to put a uh, spacer on the back, as well as a shaft cowl. And this is why, uh, FYI, uh, at least in my class, I like you guys to work with partners. Man, it's so much easier when you have more than one hand. Okay. Now, when I get when I get that down, I will tighten that up to the front right here. Uh, when I get my spacing down. Okay. Let me go ahead and just slide that back for now because the next thing I want to do is go ahead and attach my rack bracket to the floor, and I'm just going to do this with two screws. I'm just going to drop them right through the center here. I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to put two of these, uh, one on each side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the screw in the bottom one because I don't know if I need to use the middle or top hole for my drive shaft since I actually haven't put this together just yet. Not in a long while. All right, now that I've got that attached, right? The bevel gear, uh, I want them to, I want them to, what's the word, uh, mesh together. So I've got to just figure out, I've got to figure out my spacing here. I think I can do it on the top. Uh, but maybe the middle one will be better. Let's see, that's a little low. Let's go ahead and go with the top one here. And this might be a little high, but let's find out. Slide this on, just make sure that we say some. We want these two to mesh together like so. Actually, that's perfect. That's perfect. So those space together just fine. So I want, again, anytime you have a drive shaft, you want that to go all the way through uh, metal. You want it to be on both sides. Now this bevel gear is so tight. I don't think I'm going to have to use any spacers uh, because it's just really tight on the drive shaft. So once I get it where I need it to be, I should just be able to put a shaft collar on both sides. If your bevel gear slides back and forth, you would simply fill this area together with these black spacers uh, so that it wouldn't slide back and forth. For this particular one, 
it appears as if I will not have to do that at all. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these shaft collars down. Out of there. Now, the nice thing about bevel gear is it's a change in direction, right? So when you guys go build, uh, you know, any, any mechanism, um, it's a change in direction. So I know some of my students in the past have used it for like spinning flags at the top, that type of thing. You can build it from underneath. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool mechanism. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the camera here. I'm going to up this shaft collar behind here so that it's pushed right up against, oh, one second. In there, yeah, right up against, but you want them nice and meshed in together. So I've got my spacer here, so I don't have metal on metal. Give that a little crank. Now this can still slide out this way. So just to stop that from happening, I'm gonna slide a couple of spacers here and put my last shaft collar out here. Slide that all the way up, right? And why I put the spacers in there uh, is that way I don't have to tighten it through here. I can tighten it out here. All right. Make sure I'm missing. Oh, you know what I'm missing? I'm missing a shaft collar out front here. So you will need a fifth shaft collar. There we go. Now, I mean, I knew I built it right. I just wasn't sure why in the world it was giving me such a hard time. Now this is a cool gear, especially when it comes to your pull toy. Um, man, you can make it, like I said, spin a flag at the top, merry-go-round. Is it a merry-go-round? Yeah. Carousel, whatever it's called. Um, all kinds of cool stuff I've seen with this. Tighten this one back down. All right. And again, I don't need the one in the back, but since it's on there, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Can't hurt. Now you can actually see these gears here. I get right there. These two gears here are nice and meshed together. I had it on the back, which the back of a bevel gear is flat, right? They're, they're only a one-sided gear. So you have to have the front meet the front. And uh, again, I'm looking at it from on top. I didn't even notice that. I'm like, what in the world's going on? And so now you see it's nice and nice and smooth. And if I come back here, you know, it is reversible. I can go, I can change my input and my output. I can go both directions. It is rotary. Uh, right now, I cannot remember what the gear ratio is. Uh, it just depends on how many teeth we got from here. It just depends on, too, what's your input and what's your output. And we'll talk about that as we go down the line. Hope this helps. I couldn't find uh, many others out there online. Um, again, uh, take a look at the pieces you need ahead of time. Make sure everything's tight. Make sure this is real uh, meshed together. And there's your bevel gear. I hope you get to use it down the line. Have a great day.